why would you want a foundation? Why would anyone want an art foundation? Why would someone want to spend hours and hours and hours and endless sessions studying perspective and rendering in depth when all you want to do is draw some cool, interesting things? Well, the foundation is where we study the fundamentals of art. It's how you could conceive the craft of art being personified into a set of tools and ideas that we can create as a foundation for our future artistic endeavors and success. I think there's a number of reasons why a foundation is critical for artists who are wanting to work today and create amazing things. I think that it gives us ability to begin with. It gives us a good foundation to create the things that we want to create. It also gives us flexibility and I think it also gives us a common language which can be very, very useful. In this video, I want to unpack these ideas a little bit more and give you an idea for why you should want to build a strong out foundation for your career. Let's get started. Just quickly, my name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for 20 years and I've been a drawing teacher as a hobby for quite some time. And I teach a lot of students foundational concepts. One of the primary things I do is teach foundation. I teach perspective and rendering and all that kind of hardcore boot camp stuff. So I see a lot of the way that people interact with this idea and come in sort of not quite sure what this is. Now, it's important to mention I'm not just talking about understanding 1.2.3 point perspective and sort of shading and a bit of anatomy. The idea of building a strong foundation is really about dedicating yourself to the craft of art and understanding those same concepts but in a lot more detail and really dedicating yourself to understanding them in as much detail as you can throughout your life. Obviously, the number one thing that building a strong foundation, understanding the fundamentals is going to get you is ability, drawing ability. And I think this can affect you in a number of ways. But, you know, I think for a lot of us, it's just about coming up with an idea and then being able to actually make that idea real, like turn that idea into a real thing. That's what I've always been interested in doing. I just grew up reading fantasy books and looking at the cover of fantasy books and I just kind of have all these ideas in my head and I want to draw them and I've always wanted to do that. And the foundation is really what allowed me to do that better and do it in a way that, you know, really fits the vision that I have. Now, not every artist wants to draw things in a really sort of three-dimensional way where you 100% you need a strong foundation. There's lots of different ways to go about this. And again, I'll have a separate video that talks about the benefits of not having a foundation, of, of sort of going your own way. But I think for me, and I think for a lot of people, if you're similar, you have ideas which are, you know, more based in the three-dimensional world. You want to create scenes and stories and images that you might have seen in things like comics or animation, um, illustrations, and you just want to do the same thing. The foundation is really what gives you the ability to do that in an effective way. That really is at its core what you're going to get. But in addition to that, you also gain the ability to create things that other people are asking you to create. And I think this is where the foundation can be very beneficial, obviously, because the foundation is really what allows you to excel in the professional working artist environment. Now, again, here I don't mean quite so much being an auteur artist or someone who is creating, you know, very personal work and trying to build a following. What I mean here is working in the entertainment industry, working as a professional illustrator, and really being just, you know, a, a professional working artist who can take on a large array of projects. But even if you are working in a very personal style, when someone comes to you and says, hey, I, I have a job for you, I need you to do this, 
I feel like the foundation is the thing that allows you to say, cool, no problem. As opposed to saying, okay, yeah. And, you know, internally you're kind of like sweating and going through existential dread and you're just terrified because you have no idea how to actually do that. And again, I've been in both situations and I can tell you having the foundation is the much more fun, enjoyable way to experience that. Just quickly, if you're wanting to improve your illustration, specifically your line and color illustration, you might want to check out my free line and color quick start guide. It goes over my thoughts on how to develop a process for creating this. In Photoshop, you get all the brushes and Photoshop documents that I use to create the work that I create. And I also talk a little bit in that quick start guide about how you want to think about your process to best make sure that you're setting yourself up to work as a professional sort of illustrator and artist. So if that's something that's interesting, you might want to check that out. And the link for that will be in the description. Now, in addition to ability, I think that maybe more exciting is the fact that the foundation gives you flexibility. It allows you to take on different projects and not be quite so pigeonholed into saying, I am this type of artist. And I've seen that a lot of people sort of say that, like people say, I am the type of artist who, you know, only draws women or men or monsters or this or that. And again, I, I feel like to me, what that says is, well, you don't have a strong foundation because if you had a strong foundation, you, you would see there's no real difference between drawing men and women. You might be better at one versus another, but... Again, if you really understand the fundamentals, there shouldn't be a huge difference between drawing anything. And you can have preferences and you can have strengths, but the flexibility that the, that the foundation gives you is just the knowledge that you can take on a project and you will be able to do a pretty good job of it. And I think this is really useful if you're interested in different projects or if you just want that flexibility in your career, because that means that you've got more options. This foundation and having a really solid understanding of the art fundamentals does help you a lot with that. And it also gives you a good ability to work within a team, especially in the beginning. So again, if you're interested in being a working artist, someone who is working in the entertainment industry, or you sort of want a job as an artist, one of the most important skills you're going to have is working in a team, working with others, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning, you, you're not going to get to design or draw the most amazing things. Often, especially if you're working in the entertainment industry on concept art or something like that, you kind of have to fit into the project and the project changes. You might be working somewhere and People work on one game and then they work on a different game for the next three years and the art direction is different. So that's where, again, you find people who are heavily invested in the entertainment industry from a career standpoint are really interested in those foundational concepts because that gives them the flexibility to understand how does my, how does my skill set apply you know, on this project versus this project. Um, I think that flexibility is good to have from a career standpoint if you're a freelance artist and you're looking for different jobs, but it's really key to have the foundation if you're looking to go into a team on a project because you need to fit into that project and you need to be able to understand the visual language and how you can help out on that team. Because if you can help out on the team and fit into the project and make your art director's life happy and easy, then you're more likely to stay employed and you're more likely to get more jobs and more fun jobs and, again, just progress in your career. Personally, the flexibility for me, you can see in my career, is that I've drawn books about pirates and I've drawn books like the Pinocchio book that I drew which is very much about cartoony characters in a fun land. But people also hire me to work on post-apocalyptic shooting games where I'm drawing, you know, people with guns shooting monsters. And I sort of, I'm one of those people who kind of likes working on different projects with different people. That's very interesting. That's very exciting. 
And again, the foundation is what's allowed me to do that without freaking out quite so much. I can take on these projects because I have a basic understanding of how all of these different styles and things work, and I can kind of adapt myself to it. Now, obviously, there's a limit, right? I'm still working within my style, but the foundation allows me to kind of work on, you know, things with different tonalities and, again, take on any subject matter in, in a very happy, you know, carefree way. Now, something that I think is often overlooked is the fact that foundation gives you common language with other artists and especially other artists who have also studied a similar foundation. And in many cases, especially if you are working in groups and teams, a lot of people have studied these foundational concepts and they have the language to understand and communicate with each other to help art direct and critique. This can also help you as a freelance artist when you're dealing with clients. Now, not everyone has an art foundation, not everyone uses the same words for everything even. So it's not one to one, but often when you're working with, you know, clients and people who are just sort of wanting you to create art for some project they're working on, they may not have any art foundation. They may not be a trained art director, but if you have an understanding of those different aspects and you have words and language to attach to it and you're confident about that, you know that this is why this is happening. This is why that other thing's happening. And you can communicate that. And you're confident about it because, again, you just understand the language and the system, the foundational concepts. It does give you a lot of ability to try and explain to people in a logical way, this is why we're doing it this way. And if we did it this other way, this other thing would happen. Someone may not fully understand what you're saying, but they will trust you because you're talking in a logical way. Whereas if you're purely just kind of coming at it from the artistic standpoint, often that's a non-verbal understanding of why stuff looks good. And what you'll find is when you're work talking to people who don't have a strong art foundation, uh, they just don't get what you're talking about. No one's going to understand if you kind of say, oh, it's just sort of, you know, I just feel it you know, needs to be this way. No, you, you, you need to be able to articulate and talk about these concepts to let other people's minds at ease that it sounds like you know what you're talking about. And again, I think it's just a matter of understanding that a lot of people need that logical framework of explanation in order to feel like, okay, look, this person said this is why we're doing it this way. And then, you know, you, you're going to have less sort of pushback, right, if you have a logical reason. And again, I, I think that's something that does come in quite handy just from, a, you know, dealing with different situations. The language does help you. Now, those are talking about the external language, right? So the idea is we're talking to someone. We're trying to articulate our ideas to someone else. But that's not the only way language functions. Language is an internal function as well. And if you have a solid understanding of these concepts yourself, and the ideas are linked to different language and ideas, I know this sounds abstract, but stick with me, then it helps you understand it, and it helps you being able to critique your own art, again, when you are stepping back and having more of that sort of art direction, like, you know, um, conscious thought, like, what's wrong with this? How could this be better? If you have language there, then that will sort of help you. So if you're just kind of thinking about, like, oh, you know, the shading needs to be better. That's one of these terms people often say, the shading. Well, it's like, yeah, the shading's good, but what you really need to understand is how do we break that down? So, you know, within the concept of shading or lighting, there's light, there's reflected light, there's ambient occlusion, there's ambient light, there's the Fresnel effect, there's cast shadow, there's form shadow, there's contact shadow, there's shadow diffusion. And if you just have language for those things, you're going to be able to look at it and analyze what the differences are and, and maybe have a better go at figuring out how to fix something that maybe is not working with your image. So there's a couple of things that really talk about the benefits of having a foundation and how it can help you as a working artist trying to make money and a career out of your art. There's a couple of other things, right? There's there's a fourth concept here that I want to give you as a bonus, which I think is maybe the most important thing for you. And that is that 
competition is strong. And I think if you are pursuing a career as a working artist, you're going up against a lot of other people who do have a strong foundation. And the reason for that is that the information for how to do these things, how to study perspective, how to study light, how to study rendering, how to study composition, how to do master studies and, and break down the art that we like, these concepts are now well understood and there's plenty of information and courses out there that you can take for a relatively low amount of money and get good at this. And that wasn't the case back in the day. So a lot of the idea and the attitude that people have to kind of art is maybe that sort of you can get into one of these jobs and not really know. You know, you can just kind of rock out of high school and be like, oh, I don't really know anything, but I'm creative and maybe someone will give me a shot. No one's giving you a shot, right? No one's going to give you a shot because the level just coming out of the gate is quite high because access to this information is so readily available. So I got my first job in 2002, early 2002, and I got it at a video game studio as a texture artist. The reason I got that job is because I could use Photoshop. There was one other guy in the city, in the state, who also probably could use Photoshop. His name was Simon Scales, and he runs the school that you know I teach at. So there was two of us, and I got the job. And the reason I got the job was not because I was the best artist. It's not. It's just because there was no one else. No one else was doing this because it was so hard to learn Photoshop, to learn digital art, and also just to learn these foundational concepts because there weren't any good books. They'd all gone out of print. There was nothing. It was scorched earth. And, you know, I was there. They were giving me a shot. I just don't think that happens anymore. I think the level is so high and, you know, I, I just think it's really important to understand that if you are pursuing that, you do need to really hit these concepts pretty hard and have a good foundation to begin with. And I think that can be very tricky because, you know, people look at influencers these days. You know, I know a lot of young kids are sitting there looking at influencers on Instagram or TikTok and saying like, oh, you know, I'm going to graduate from high school and, you know, be an artist like this. Those people who are influencers on Instagram are not getting work as artists because their art is not good enough. They're getting good at doing the influencer stuff and making it look all fancy. But, you know, again, they're not going to have the flexibility. I can see the work. Um, you know, a large portion of the students that I get who are just coming out of a relatively small state in Australia who are coming in in first year out of high school have better art than most of the influencers that you see. And by the time that they, you know, the, the top 10, 15% come out and graduate um, after doing three or four years, uh, they're all better than 99% of, you know, art influencers or people who are on there, you know, beating the drum and being like, you know, hey, you know, look, I'm doing art. Um, what you want to look for when you're trying to look at, you know, artists who are working is what work have they done? Are they actually working in the industry? Where, what jobs have they done? And look at that. If you're going to sort of look at the approaches they take or the level that they've got. Again, it's very easy to look at people who seem like, oh, they're successful and they're doing it. It's like, are they actually getting work? Uh, are they actually employed? How long have they, have they been doing this for? So it's very tricky these days to see um, you know, what the level is. And, and that's where it's really important for you if you're sort of thinking, oh, do I need to do this? Like, yes, you do. And you need to really be clear about how good you're going to need to be if you do want to get a job at a big studio like Riot or Blizzard or something like that. The level is pretty high right out of the gate. And again, that's exciting because you have access to the same information to a certain degree as a lot of people who in past times you know, had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to these big art colleges and learn the same thing. And again, that's exciting, but you do need to put in the work and you do need to study foundation. Okay, so you might be thinking, that sounds good. How do I get an art foundation? How do I study these concepts? Well, there's quite a few good options out there already. There's quite a few good things on YouTube that do go over it. 
Um, in the description, I'll link to some of those. But also on this channel, I plan to make a lot of content just going over the basic drawing principles and how to apply them and how to make them as fun as possible. So hit the subscribe button, etc. I don't normally say that, but again, if you do want to do that, follow this channel. I'm going to put out a lot of videos over the next few years talking about how to get better at drawing. Now, that's obviously one side of the story. And I do think there's a lot of benefit in doubling down on personality and style and really figuring these things out yourself and not getting too technical with it. I know a lot of really, really great artists who don't go down this road. And I think there's a lot of benefits to that. If you want to, you know, check out what I think about that, check out this video, which goes over that in more detail in a similar way to this video. Um, other than that, catch you around. Happy drawing.